Hey everybody, it's Samantha. From conniving with Caesar behind her brother's back to her theatrical tendencies, here are some strange things you didn't know about Cleopatra. Number 12, not Egyptian. This renowned woman's full name was Cleopatra VII Thea Philopator, which means Cleopatra the father-loving goddess in Greek. Although she was born in Egypt, you might be surprised to find out that she wasn't actually Egyptian. In fact, her roots were Greek. Her family traced back to Ptolemy I Soter, who was a general of Alexander the Great. He ruled Egypt after Alexander passed on in 323 BC. Ptolemy was the beginning of a long line of Greek rulers in the country, whose primary language was that of their nation of origin. However, even though Cleopatra's ancestry is widely accepted, some studies suggest that she might not have been 100% Greek. Her younger sister, Princess Arsinoe, posed a threat to her throne. So it is thought that Cleopatra banished Princess Arsinoe to Ephesus, a former port city in Greece, and ordered her demise. After archaeologists discovered Arsinoe's tomb in the 1920s, they took measurements of the skull inside. Later on, using modern technology, they created a digital reconstruction of the woman's face. Her physical characteristics suggest that she had European, African, and Egyptian ancestry. This brings forth the question, was Cleopatra African as well? Number 11, her beauty. Nowadays, when we think of Cleopatra, we think of a beautiful, statuesque woman of power. However, her allegedly stunning appearance wasn't this queen's greatest asset. The Romans purposely misinformed the public concerning Cleopatra's political practices. They convinced people that the young queen used her looks to woo men to get what she wanted. But what's lesser known about Cleopatra is that she was an extremely knowledgeable woman. She spoke numerous languages, including Hebrew, Arabic, Latin, and Ethiopian. Cleopatra was also the first Ptolemaic pharaoh to speak Egyptian. She was also very educated in philosophy, mathematics, and astronomy. Plus, she was also a great public speaker. Cleopatra was later described as a queen who elevated the ranks of scholars and enjoyed their company. In fact, it is possible that this pharaoh wasn't as beautiful as she was thought to be after all. Her portraits on coins depict her with a large, curved nose and masculine features. The author of Cleopatra, Last Queen of Egypt, said, People tend to think that her coins are more lifelike, and if you look at them, she's not particularly beautiful, as she has a big nose and chin. But then, how accurate can a coin portrait be? It has also been theorized that she wanted to be portrayed as manly to project strength. But Plutarch, a Greek writer and philosopher, once wrote that Cleopatra's beauty wasn't necessarily beyond comparison, but her enchanting voice and irresistible charm are what made her so enticing. Number 10, smarts. Cleopatra was knowledgeable in other ways as well. In addition to speaking multiple languages and studying the subjects we already mentioned, this queen was well-versed in cosmetics and gynecology. In Duane W. Roller's book titled Cleopatra, it reads, Cleopatra was a writer. She wrote a medical treatise called Cosmetics. It may have been called Cosmetics, but this was no Cosmo article. It was a medical and pharmacological work, including several remedies for hair loss and dandruff. She was also thought to have been involved in numerous architectural feats, including the Lighthouse of Alexandria, which is one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. L. Daly wrote in The Missing Millennium, another historian credits one of the greatest structures of the ancient world, the Lighthouse of Alexandria, to Cleopatra. It was not just a lighthouse to guide ships, it was a magnificent telescope, and it had a huge lens that could burn oncoming ships that were going to attack Egypt. Number 9, beginning with Caesar. You probably know that Cleopatra and Julius Caesar were romantically involved for quite some time, but let's discuss the subject in further detail for a minute. Cleopatra's father allied with Rome after deciding it was becoming the greatest power at the time. However, since many authoritative Greeks and Egyptians disagreed with the alliance, they ultimately decided Cleopatra would do better on the throne. So, Ptolemy paid Romans to invade Egypt, thus securing his spot as pharaoh. But when her father passed away in 51 BC, Cleopatra and her brother gained power over Egypt. She rejected him as co-ruler, but he still had strong allies. In 49 BC, Cleopatra's forces were fighting to overtake Ptolemy the 13th. Pompey, the great son, Nias Pompeius, arrived in Egypt in search of military aid for his father. Cleopatra and her brother sent 500 troops and 60 ships to Pompey the Great. Cleopatra ended up losing her fight with Ptolemy the 13th and had to leave Egypt. In 48 BC, Caesar defeated Pompey, who was forced to flee. He ended up in Egypt, where Ptolemy the 13th ultimately ordered his termination. The Roman ruler went to Alexandria and ordered Cleopatra and her brother to disband their armies. This was when Cleopatra went to see Caesar personally. Number 8, Caesar's Mistress. Cleopatra had heard that Julius was inclined to become romantic with women of royalty and dressed appealingly to catch his attention. Ptolemy XIII was angry after finding out that Cleopatra was associating with Caesar and tried to create a riot in Alexandria. However, Julius calmed the crowd with his speaking skills. After being bombarded by Ptolemy's forces, Cleopatra and Caesar eventually won the fight when his reinforcements arrived. Apparently, at this point, Cleopatra had been pregnant with Caesar's baby since September 47 BC. Cleopatra then became the ruler of Egypt with her then 12-year-old brother, Ptolemy XIV, who Julius appointed to govern alongside her. 
However, despite her required marriage to her younger brother, Cleopatra continued to live with Caesar. Their child, Caesarion, came into the world on June 23, 47 BC. His initial name was Pharaoh Caesar. In 46 BC, Cleopatra and Ptolemy XIV visited Rome, and she earned a reputation of arrogance. She and Julius were disliked by many, and his arranged demise took place on March 15, 44 BC. Cleopatra stayed in Rome in case Caesarion was named heir to the throne. However, after Octavian, Caesar's grandnephew, took over the throne, she went back to Egypt and ordered Ptolemy XIV's poisoning, thus making Caesarion her co-ruler. Number 7. Snakebite Many believe that it's common knowledge that Cleopatra passed away from a snakebite, but this might not have been the case. After Octavian took his forces to Alexandria in 30 BC, Cleopatra hid in her tomb with her close assistants, making Mark Antony, her other well-known lover, believe that she had taken her own life. He was so upset about Cleopatra's untimely demise that he ended his life as well. Soon after, Gaius Proculius, Octavian's companion, apprehended Cleopatra. Apparently, the Roman ruler had no intention of ending the Egyptian queen's life, but he did plan on sending her and her kids to Rome. Therefore, with no will to live alongside Octavian as his trophy wife, so to speak, Cleopatra planned her own termination. At the age of 39, the female pharaoh passed on. However, there is a debate as to how she performed the task. Despite the common snake story, Cleopatra might have used a poison that she allegedly kept inside one of her combs. Plutarch wrote that snake venom was introduced to her bloodstream via scratching. But Strabo, another Greek philosopher, believed she used the poison within her comb and injected it into her arm with a needle. Since there was no snake found near her body and the two puncture wounds on her arm could have been made with a needle, some believe this to be true. Number 6. Betrayals You probably know by now that Cleopatra wasn't innocent when it came to the game of ancient politics, and she'd do just about anything to retain her throne. It was pretty much a Ptolemaic tradition to defeat family members to gain power. Ptolemy XIII passed away after she and Caesar gained control during their silver war. Plus, Cleopatra had her sister, Arsinoe, taken care of when she posed a threat to her rule and got rid of her younger brother, as we already discussed. These cruel events were extremely prevalent at the time. Number 5. Most Expensive Movie Cleopatra was one of the most famous women that ever lived, and after she passed away, multiple films were made in her legacy. One of these movies was in 1963's Cleopatra, perhaps the most well-known take on the young queen's life. The feature starred Elizabeth Taylor in the title role and was as dramatic as Cleopatra herself. From the time filming started, there were several problems with production and the script, which ended up costing much more money than was intended. A budget of just $2 million quickly became $44 million, 200000 of which was just for Elizabeth Taylor's costumes. At the time it came out, Cleopatra was the priciest movie ever made, and it almost caused the studio to go bankrupt. Number 4. Close Family Relationships And we mean really, really close. Not only did Cleopatra have to marry two of her brothers for the sake of the Ptolemaic tradition, but she was also a product of an inner family relationship. Her father was king, and not much is known about her mother, but it is suspected that her mom was Cleopatra V, her dad's sister. Over a dozen of Cleopatra's predecessors were in these family marriages, and thus were romantically involved with each other. Therefore, it's no surprise that Cleopatra was the offspring of this herself. Number 3. Drinking Club Something else you probably didn't know about Cleopatra is that she and her then-lover Mark Antony began a drinking club. The name of the group was Inimitable Livers. However, many people viewed the club as an excuse to lead a life of debauchery. The members of Inimitable Livers spent many nights binging on wine and having feasts. Apparently, Cleopatra and Mark Antony would also wander around Alexandria, dressed in costumes and playing pranks on various citizens. These two lovebirds had a playful relationship, assuming old accounts are correct. A 1957 paper in the Classic Journal discussed a story that was originally recorded in 77 AD by Pliny the Elder, a Roman author about a bet Cleopatra made with Antony. She bet that she could spend 10 million sesterces, ancient Roman coins, on a single dinner, which would be the equivalent of somewhere between 10 and 20 million dollars today. She proceeded to order a typical meal and drop one of her pearl earrings into a cup of vinegar to dissolve before drinking it. Slick move, Cleo. Number 2. Mother By now, you already know about Cleopatra's son, Caesarion, who she had with Julius Caesar. But you probably haven't heard about what happened to him or about her other kids. After Cleopatra's self-inflicted demise, Octavian lured Caesarion in by promising power and ordered his termination. Caesarion is thought to have been about 16 years old at the time. However, he wasn't Cleopatra's only child. Mark Antony fathered the queen's other kids, Ptolemy, Philadelphus, Cleopatra Selene, and Alexander Helius, the latter two of which were twins. 
They were only 6 and 10, respectively, when Cleopatra passed. Luckily, these children were taken to Rome and lived with Antony's widow, Octavia, during which time they were educated. Her daughter, Cleopatra Selene, eventually married a lesser-known king named Juba and ruled over Mauritania with him. Although her daughter had a son, who she also named Ptolemy, his demise was ordered by the Roman emperor Caligula. Therefore, Cleopatra's descendants never lived to rule over Egypt. And now for our number one. Don't forget to subscribe. Number one, dramatic. Another thing Cleopatra was known for was her taste for the dramatic. She made several entrances and first-time encounters that would never be forgotten. One of these incidents occurred when she met Julius Caesar for the first time. We already discussed that these two met in 48 BC, when she and Ptolemy were fighting. But the crazy part is how Cleopatra got into Caesar's room. She knew that her brother would try and prevent her from speaking to the Roman ruler, so she devised a plan to sneak in. Many sources say that Cleopatra wrapped herself up in a carpet or linen sack and was then smuggled into his quarters. Apparently, Caesar was immediately hypnotized by Cleopatra's boldness and good looks, and quickly became lovers and allies. Another one for the books was when the young queen met Mark Antony after Caesar passed away. When Cleopatra was called upon to meet with Antony, she allegedly did so via a golden ship with purple sails, which the men rowed with silver oars. She was dressed like Aphrodite, a Greek goddess associated with beauty, love, procreation, and pleasure, and charmed Antony immediately. Today's comment comes from Nifa from our Incredible Places That Really Exist video. Thanks for the comment, Nifa. Remember to leave your comments below and we might feature you in a future video. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.